Adams. Okay. Now, um, Today I'm actually going to share something very important for a soap painting business. And um, so I have been in. Uh, well, if this is your first time watching my me, uh, my name is Mandy, and I'm a soap painter, uh, and I do soap painting for business, and I do oil painting for exhibition. That's uh, my whole life. I'm just want to be an artist. So today I, w I really want to share something very important and I'm very organized with this. I, I, last year I received a complaint um, for, I've sold hundreds of items out, silk paintings, but I, I, I never really get any complaint and most of the time customers are happy or silent, they don't say they're happy or not. So, uh, and then, um, but I do have this complaint, the customer was not happy and uh, she, the reason is because the, the scarf she received was looking different as the photos. As we know, like when we sell things online and we need to make the photo, um, so people will relate on how the item looks um, by, based on the photo. And um, apart from the, the color difference with different light, different device, but something to do we can control, the part we can control is the design. So the last time that was because I sold the, I sold the head pen silk scarf, but then uh, I improved the design because I didn't like the first one. I think the first one, the dye was leaking out and it kind of looked dirty like a mark. And, uh, but some customers do like it. Uh, more look more like a handmade, but then what even when I do handmade uh, now if you look at my new videos and my new scarves uh, From my website or from Etsy you see like I try to avoid those um, brush strokes sometimes unless I mean avoiding the unnecessary bra bra brush strokes um, so for me, I improved that design, but for her, I sent a different scarf because it doesn't have those, uh, doesn't look exactly the same, it looked too tidy for her. So that was um, my uh, experience of uh, un uh, unsuccessful, was that item? Uh, is a, but you know, as a, as a silk painting artist, and uh, every time when we do a hand painting, well, when we do a hand painting, uh, ha uh, handmade, hand painting, it's going to look different uh, because, um, wow, the point of handmade, it's, it's, it's not, not going to be, we're not going to be able to make it perfect and then we're not going to be able to make it exactly the same every time, especially if sometimes you make your own design and you mix your own color, you don't just use the color out of the bottle. I do use uh, um, a lot of time I use them just out of the bottle but when I make some special designs for example like this scarf and I have to mix the color all by myself but then how can I make sure once I put this one for sale and the next time this, this one sold and then I uh, and then I want to keep the, sell this design what am I going to do for the next one so this today I want to share the tips here I'm using my design book and how can I keep the con uh, consistency of my items, how to make them really look like um, yeah, the customer see in the photo. And for before I get into that, I want to say share this business, uh, this business um, idea. Uh, it's when we paint a picture, like uh, the picture behind me, or I paint a picture, original picture for. For that type of artwork, we can make it put to product. If because if I only make it, if every time I sell original picture, and then the either they're gonna be very expensive, not because that um because of the cost, because of the time cost. If I paint or painting, it's gonna take me one week, and then so the price will at least need to cover the cost, my living cost, the running the business running cost for that whole week. So that make me. That means I have to, and also the cost for um, 
you know, uh, the commissions. If you I put in a garage and they will have a commission. Some some garage will take um like half, fifty percent. So if I sell that if I sell one of the, the oil painting and I let it cover all my costs and my living my rent uh for the and my studio and then that will be let's say five hundred and then if I put it in the garage and then they have to sell it for a thousand. And then for a thousand pounds, you know, like um I don't think that many people will pay that price for for um what's that? For for original painting because they would be like, Why she sell her painting for a thousand pounds? She's not that famous and I never heard of her and I better go some reproduction from the masterpiece and they look better, of course. But the um so but for, for all your painting, and it's easy to make a, to turn it to a product. The only way artists can make money is to turn your work to product. So for painting, all your painting, um, what's that? Um, color, no, watercolor painting, or pasta, just any, or, or like a digital painting. That's why people are selling copies, uh, sell the copies, sell the prints. That's um that's how artists make a living. If you only selling your originals, you are gonna be, I gonna be, starving. <laughs> so today, but we uh, when I talk about the uh, silk scarf, silk painting for for silk painting, and um, you know like we can cut the, the the like the small part, the the detail of a flower and print it as as a decoration and then sell it for prints but the, but but today i want to talk about just sell your your original silk painting over and over again for the for for, for the same design because the design part when people ask me how, how many times do i need to do um to paint a scarf and um and then i say to paint it is fast it's like five hours uh, and then steam for three hours, but to design it, that that design sometimes it take me three days to draw the uh, draft, uh, and then to print it in the computer and then to co copy it on on freeze paper. So let's say one week for my design and then five hours for my painting. But if but but then if if I'm going to cost for that week again, I have to sell this for five hundred. If I only sell it for once, but who's gonna buy it? Nobody will buy it because it's a, uh, it's five hundred and just for silk scarf, and then she's not famous. <laughs> so 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 to lower the cost, I have to turn this to a product. But how can I turn it to a product? That's all everything to do with my, um, design book. So, I put this one away. And I'll show you my design book. So in in this folder, I have all my uh, all my all my outline designs in here. Um, so I print it, I print it on A4 paper, and I just keep it there. So I know, and then with the numbers, I know which number is a uh, which slot. And then I have a. So this is my uh, color co color um, palette for silk. Actually, I need to get something to show you. I'm just gonna I'll leave it this one here. So I have um, this. Uh, this are uh, this are uh, uh, silk uh, printed, uh, not not printed, ironed on the back paper. So these are my color color pad, and um, for every scarf. This is a new system I just made up um, this year. I didn't have it before, so it made my life so much easier when painting for um, orders. So, as you can see here, for for the scarf, if someone order this scarf, okay, this just an example. Someone order this scarf, and I don't have it here. It's sold already, and um, 
what I will do. I will find out, this is my design pack. So I will find out my pack, and I found my color. You see, like um, here, it's my color pack. I take a photo when I when I painting them, and uh, I will come to my color pad. I found my color, and then transform it to this to this board. So, uh, for example, I have six three three here uh, on my on my record as I put it there, and a four six three, and then there, eight one three. And six one zero. Four six one zero. I can't find that. <laughs> uh, six one two. So I found all the pad out here. I'm just gonna put some color here. Just for example, okay. And then I will go find because I have all the number there. And then, so this is my design board. When I'm painting, I, I found I have this paper, and it's like uh, to remind myself what color I've used. And then I found my I use my color pad, and I just take them to the new board. This because this is for this scarf, so I'm gonna put that out, and then I will find my color and put them next to it. So that's how I prepare when I paint this, so I can limit myself the color I know I'm gonna use for this scarf. Okay, this is how I keep the color record. And, and then I have, uh, I also have, I also have like the color, every time when I make the color, like for, for this pink, I have made it myself. So they are not some, some something you can buy. I'm sure if you design soft penny, you will have some color you make yourself. And next time, if you want to, if you want to make the same color, and so I use a small bottle to keep the color, uh, to a small bottle. So so I the next time I can uh, mix the color look like this. And for this little pad, uh, not pad, this little sheet, those are the ones I testing my color. So when I uh, next time, when I need to paint this scarf with exactly this color, I will do this. I will take out the color I have actually used on here. And then I will pull it out. And then this one's diluted. And um, so, but it's the same color. So I will use that. And if this is not enough, I can use that as a reference for me to mix my next color. Oh, you can't see it here, sorry. So this this one is, I I just pull it out from this bottle. So next time, when I, need, when I receive an order to paint this red scarf, I will use my sample to mix a new color, match with this color. Um, so this is uh, how I match the color every time. And now let's talk about how do I keep my design. For my, this, which one is it? Okay, for, for my design, I first, which one, I don't remember which one is which. I have all the same colors in here. But anyway, I'll show you this. So this is how I keep my design. If you have the design and the color right, you'll be able to reproduce the orders look exactly 90 percent exactly look at what the customer says from your shop so this is um when after i draw the design i print it out on a4 paper and then i stick them together because my printer are not able to print big bigger bigger paper so i will just i just do this i stick them together to the to the actual size before I lay the silk on top. I th actually, I don't lay the silk on top. What I do, I print this paper. This is the size, this is 180. 
uh, by this size is 180 by 35. This is my, my silks, the, the, the exact size. So, and I, I use this, I print it out, but I do not lay the silk on top of it. What I do is I put I use a uh, freeze paper, okay? I use freeze paper and um, I trace the freeze paper. I trace the, the design on the freeze paper on the back of it. So when you print your when you print your design out, make sure you print it mirrored because uh, because once you turn it back, it will become the the way it wants. So so if but if you if you print it out not mirrored the way you want it, and after you trace it on the back of this paper, it will become the opposite way you want it. Um, so if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you know, like let me know what you don't know so I can make a video to explain that better. So on, on this freeze paper, I, I iron the silk on top, uh, and then I, I will trace it, I, I will Trace it with um with a gutta gutta bottle. So that's how I'm, I make the design. I hope that everything makes sense. That's um just very important to keep the color and design looks the same when you sell your silk scarves. Um, yeah. So that's all. That's all. That that's all I have for today. I will maybe put a title on this video and um, try to make it useful. Because I have been editing photos, editing, editing, editing. Uh, I will soon share like about how to take photos and editing your photos ways um, uh, for your business. So that's just uh, that's just a quick video to I think to share something very important today. And um, thank you for watching. Bye for now. What, what did you...